you too can have CRT recordings that look like this. And it's not very hard, but it's not very easy. And you don't need a fancy camera, but an iPhone will help. So uh, I'm going to take you through step by step. Let's just get right into it. So one of the first things to consider is what TV you're going to use. Now, I've found that I have best my best luck with the small CRT right here. It's a 20-incher. And I have a hard time with those 36-inchers. Now, I think it's doable with those. But I'd say the smaller the CRT, the easier time you're going to have starting out. So I picked this 20-incher here. And I'll even do this. Check this out. Oh, that ain't what we're doing. We're doing that. You see how I hit the button? And it underscans. And that's going to make this 20-inch CRT more like, I don't know, an 18-inch or something like that. And that helps. And... So the deal with that is the more a pattern you'll get on the screen and that's like these wavy lines you'll get like this vertical lines you shouldn't have any vertical lines recording a CRT if you have a high-end CRT you should just have what I mean by vertical lines you shouldn't have any black vertical lines you should just have scan lines and I found like if I just put my camera up to my CRT and it's the right distance to record I get the worst more a pattern and you can either zoom out and it'll limit the moray or you can zoom in and I've chose to zoom in so what I do is I you know I find a smaller CRT and then I get my camera like set up here here's my iPhone camera I use and I get it like as close as I can to my CRT let's see here like I'm probably going to cut a little bit off. Like I'll zoom in like that. That's cutting too much off. So I'll get something like that. You know, maybe the uh, the character sprite. Oh, character sprite images. You know, you can see Guile over there. You can see Saget. I could even zoom in a little bit more with this. Something like that's pretty good. And I can see in this recording right now, you can see the more a pattern right here. So I'm going to show you guys how to deal with that. And you'll see like a scrolling bar once in a while. I'll show you guys how to deal with that. But the first thing I do, come over here. Oh, I suppose I should show you what um, program we're using on my iPhone here. I'm using this. Pro Movie. I think it was like five bucks. And I use this because it has a focus setting on my iPhone. And I think you're going to have the best luck with any iPhone you can get that has 4K recording capabilities. Um, so first thing I do, I come over here. We're going to pick what we're going to record in. Now I record in 4x3 just in case somebody wants to watch this on like a VGA monitor. They won't get any black bars. Like you can see here on this TV how there's black bars around it because I'm in underscan. Well, you'll get that same look if somebody goes to watch my recording on YouTube later. If I record in 16 by 9. So I record in 4 by 3, and it doesn't seem to harm the 16 by 9 characters. You know, basically everyone else out there watching this. And this particular camera won't record in 12 megapixels, I think that is. So I use 8. And then, uh, so you want to use the highest resolution you can. You'll get the best recording. It'll limit artifacts. It just looks better. And frame rate. Here, the typical wisdom is to use a frame rate of 30 or 60 or pretty much 30 or 60. And that's going to eliminate that rolling bar you get. And also, um, sometimes you can get like a, like a strobing effect if your frame rate's not right. I found with this iPhone... I can even set it to 25, which doesn't make any sense. And it just really doesn't seem to have that strobing issue that you get with basically any other camera. But um, I still can get it. So I set it to 30, and I've been setting quality to higher. Um, I don't know why. That's what I've been doing. Um, next thing we're going to do is... Um, 
will line up the camera. So, like I said, you want to you want to line it. You got to so you guys got to get a tripod. You go to Walmart, get yourself a twenty dollar tripod, set it in front of your TV, and then you're gonna want it all lined up. Like you can see right now that my my TV and my phone aren't parallel. So we're going to want to set them like parallel, something like this. And then also you don't want it tilted too much like that or like that, whatever. You want it, your phone lined up with your TV as close as you can get it. And then we'll go in and we'll pull up a grid pattern. Heck, I got one on here, I think, on my BVM. I think I got a grid pattern in here. Cross hatch. There we go. So now you want to use your grid here to line everything up. What I'll do is put my finger on the center here. And I'm not even close to lined up. That's the center of the screen. So I'm going to move my phone over until that's in the center there. So I'm not even close. So I'm going to line this up. Let's see, there's the center of the screen right there. And it's not lined up on my phone. So I'll line this up and then get back to you guys. All right, so I got it lined up here. Now we're going to start dialing in our image. Uh, one thing to notice, I got a reflection up there. So we're going to get rid of all the light in the room. And you know, really can't do that with this camera. Because then the, see how grainy the picture gets? This camera can't handle that. Like, I can't set this Android camera right here like I have my iPhone and get a decent recording with all the lights out. It just doesn't work. Um, but the iPhone can do that. You can have the room completely dark so that only the CRT is on and get a decent recording. And that's a strength of the iPhone. The iPhone just seems to get rid of a lot of issues you'll get with even a really expensive camera or um, an Android phone. So one thing you can mess with if you don't have an iPhone is the ISO and the exposure. I don't really know. I had a hard time and never could figure it out. If you have an iPhone, you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to have to leave some light on in here for now, just until I switch over to my iPhone. Just because the recording will look so bad. So, anyways, let's, let's go in and I'll show you my settings I'll do over here on my iPhone. So, we'll go into settings. Let's see, we don't need any of those. Uh, first thing to do, all of these settings down here, you're going to need to lock in because they're on auto adjust right now. So as your screen changes from like a black screen to a white Konami screen to a dark level, a bright level, all these will start auto adjusting down here. And your image is just going to go, it'll go from like, let's see if I can show you. If I hit white balance. You, you'll you see how it's blue, and then it's like more red, and then it's blue. It'll be doing stuff like that, so you need to lock all these in. So the first one to lock in is shutter. Now with the iPhone, it doesn't make much of a difference. This is going to eliminate that rolling bar you get, or also the strobing effect you can get. You want it at 30 or 60. On the iPhone, it doesn't matter as much, but I still set it to 30 and 60. Like, see the strobing going on right there? That, you'll get that if you don't have your frame rate and your shutter locked into 30 and 60. Anyway, so we'll come over here, set that to 30, shutter. Um, I need to, okay, set 30 right now. I need to just manually touch it once and set it to 30, otherwise it'll it'll manually adjust. So 
like right now you can see down here there's a red line underneath where it says shutter and that means that it is it is at it is locked in at 30 so it won't auto adjust anymore ISO is going to adjust the brightness um, the darker you have it the less more you get I tend to leave it around 30 Uh, like this game is a really bright game. I could probably get away with 25. Let's just leave it at 25. White balance. It's going to adjust the colors if you go. So we're on white balance now. If you go over here and adjust it this way, you obviously got a very blue screen. I just adjust it by eye so it looks like it does on my BVM. I remember this game looks pretty good around 6,000. So now the white balance has a red bar under it. So we know that it's it's locked in. Um, oh yeah, so while we're adjusting the brightness, you should come over here, oh man, fucked up my BVM, and um, adjust the, the contrast on here. I'm going to turn the contrast down. Not too dark, that's too dark, but we'll put it something like that. going to make it a little darker than I would normally game. Something like that. And that's going to help with the moire pattern. So it's a little bit darker. You know, we did the shutter, so we should get rid of that rolling bar. Um, ISO's locked in. I think we're going to move on to the uh, the iPhone and I'll, and I'll do the moire pattern, the final adjusting there. You can see here all of this moire, let's see, yeah, I'm not seeing moire there, but if I come over here, I can see all this moire, all these vertical lines. We're going to get rid of that. Okay, so we're over on the iPhone now, and I can see like a terrible moire pattern going on. Um, let me just uh, put the lights out, um, get rid of that reflection. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, it looks really dark right now. Let's see. I think that's because I just have the brightness on my phone turned down. So, let's adjust the focus. I'm going to adjust my screen brightness a little bit. Okay. Um, so, you can see a terrible moire pattern. Um, the way to get rid of that is to hug in close to the screen. Like if I get in closer, you'll see the moire pattern will go away. But now you can't see the game. So you can back up a lot and it goes away, but so there's a balance, you know, you can't back up too much because then you can't see the game right. And if you get in too close, you know, it's too, you know, it looks it's hard on the eyes and you're cutting off some gameplay so you get into a good kind of in-between which I think we're at right now and then what you're gonna do is adjust the focus here so if I bring it out of focus it'll go away like there the moray has gone but it's too blurry so we'll bring it back there's the moray Okay, now the moire is gone on my screen here, and I found that if I leave it so it's gone on my screen, when I actually record and then move it over, it'll pop up when I look at my recording. So on your like viewfinder, on your screen, on your phone, isn't how it's going to look when you bring it up on VLC or on YouTube or whatever on your computer. So I get it to where it's gone. And then I, t so I'm at 53 on focus. I drop it back three is what I've been doing lately. So now my focus is at 50. I want it at 50. Uh, 49, close enough. And that's basically it. We're ready to record here. Um, let's see if I forgot anything. Uh, let's just move over and um, we'll go look at some footage over on my computer. 
but basically this is it like you're set to record some CRT footage we got rid of that rolling bar with the shutter and the frame rate set to uh, set to 30 and we turned our ISO down and our uh, our our contrast on our image is a little darker we made it a little darker to get rid of the moraine we hugged in oh one more thing I can show you uh, another thing you can mess with to get rid of that rolling bar is actually go into if you have this on an emulator you can set the refresh yeah refresh rate on your game so where is it it would be in settings video so if you come over here like this game is set to it'll set, it defaults to 60 in an emulator so if you just load this in it, like if you're playing a game, like a Neo Geo game, I know a lot of those, the refresh rate isn't right at 60. Um, so if the refresh rate is at like say 59, which this game is natively right here. If, it, if you were to play this on an arcade PCB, it wouldn't be syncing up with your camera right now because your frame rate and your shutter's at 30. But this game is a little bit off. So unless you have like a really fine tuning uh, feature on your camera for shutter to set it at 59.63 or you have an iPhone you're gonna have a hard time but if you load it in an emulator it look it defaults to 60 now I could set it right now to 59 I just changed it to the native resolution or native refresh rate which I would do if I was gaming so that the game actually plays at the proper timing like um if you have a game that's at 59 or 57 and you're playing it at 60 your game is actually playing faster Speedrunners care about that, or if you're playing Dota on Pachi and then bullets are coming at you fast, you would care too. So that's another feature you can do. Let's move over to the computer and I'll show you a couple more things. All right, so we're over here at my computer. It's actually my son's computer, because um, <laughs> mine's hooked up to a CRT. But uh, yeah, this is where you do your editing, and this is just as important as setting your your video up, you're setting all your phone, your recording up. Uh, I have several programs that will edit your videos. They're free. I'm not good at editing, so you'll have to look up like the editing process for like how to cut and splice and add text and all that. You'll have to find someone else to do that. I use this program here, uh, VSDC. Yeah, free video editor, and I love it. I used to use this one, Resolve, and it's just an unwieldy beast. I don't recommend you use it. There was another one I had, Hit Key, Hot Key, I don't remember. Um, but this one, this is what I've settled on, and it is just so easy to use, VSDC. So we'll click on that. It's gonna open up. I think it's gonna ask us to like buy the, uh, you know, the non-free one. Um, yeah, it wants us to upgrade, of course, but we're not going to upgrade, so we're just going to, we're going to exit out of this right here. Exit out of here. And then a new version is available. I'm not going to do that because this one's working just fine for me. And it says 6.67 is available. I don't know what version I'm on, but it's earlier than that one. And then, um, so first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna start a new project. Let's see. Projects. New project. And project one, sure, we'll name it that. And now this is kind of, the crux of the biscuit here, guys, is this resolution. The default one it's going to set to is this, 16 by 9, which works fine, but we recorded in 4 by 3. So this 4K 4096 by 3072 pixels just works perfect for recording CRTs. Um, this one will work good too, but since we did the 4 by 3 recording, we're going to edit it in 4x3, and then our finished product will be 4x3. And um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. That's all you got to do. And then, um, okay, I'm not going to go into all the details on how to edit stuff with this program. 
Um, there's plenty of information out there. It's really easy to find, you know, on YouTube or even on their own website. But we'll just add an object here to get started. And we'll add a video. Let's see. Recent. We'll add this one here. And then this this type of stuff here, you'll just you'll have to look up a tutorial on how to use this program. It'll tell you how to do everything. It's very simple and easy to use compared to the other two programs I tried. So we have a video on there. Say this was your whole playthrough. If you didn't need to add anything, you could um, just go check it out right here. I'll tend to like when I check it out, I'll I'll load it in a like a lower quality just so it's easier to render. We can watch it. You know, make sure it's it's good, and then if we're happy with that, um, we can come over here, and we'll go to export project, and output file. We might want to rechange the name there to like YouTube Ready is something I do, and this is the thing. On other programs I used, you'd have to mess with this and find the right quality. The default it sets to, this ultra quality H.264 AVC CRF20 audio AAC 320 kilobits per second. This default here just works great. So you don't have to mess with none of this. You just, you just straight up hit export project. And that's what makes VSDC so great is you don't, a lot of things you just don't have to mess with. So we would just hit export project right here and uh, our video would be done basically. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is um, before you actually record your video, like remember I showed you how to line up the CRT, how to set the focus, how to set everything. I know it sounds bad, but a lot of times after I said everything, I have it all dialed in, I'll record a short little video and I'll come over here and just put my video on my computer and I'll load it in VLC and watch it in here once. Because a lot of times moray is one of the things. I'll think there's no moray on the screen and then I'll watch it in VLC and I've got bad moray pattern. So I'll watch it on here and then I'll have to take it back and set everything up again as close to how I had it as before. And, you know, especially when you start out, I recommend you do that because, you know, if you don't, you what if you record a whole video or for me, I'm recording one credit clears. Sometimes they're really hard to get. So you just recorded your one credit clear. Like you might not get that again for a day or two, like a lot of grinding. You're going to friggin' cry if your recording looks like dog doo doo. No. So I'll give you my final thoughts here in a sec. So I got the finished product scrolling in the background here. It's a recent playthrough I did on Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. One credit clear, hardest, oh Sagat victory. Really proud of it. Check it out if you get the chance. So I wanted to talk about a couple of things before we go. One is that... If you do go out and buy an iPhone, like I ended up doing just to record videos, iPhones kind of suck. There's a lot of problems with them. Um, one of the, the biggest hurdles happened to me is that I bought like a smaller iPhone. I don't remember the exact size, 40 gigs or something. And I'm like, that's enough to do one video. And it would be enough to shoot one video, except half the phone when you get it, this like 20 gigs is taken up with, I don't even know what, that you can't erase. And then when you use an app like I do, like a video pro or whatever it was called, pro movie, excuse me, um, you have to export it to camera roll. Um, it's a step I forgot to mention that uh, if you do end up getting that app, there's a little, after you shoot your video, there's a little square with an arrow on it. You need to hit that 
after you record something and then a, a window will pop up and you need to say export to camera roll and then you'll be able to find it on your iPhone. Other than that, like I remember I just couldn't find my recording. I, I wouldn't transfer it to my computer. But once you do that, it'll show up and your Windows computer will see it. But the problem there is that it actually doubles your file when you do that. So if you shot a 40 gig or 30 gig video, which like 20, 30 minutes of video can do that. Now you have 60 gigs, which is too big for a small phone to handle. So you might need to buy a large iPhone. I bought an iPhone 7. Um, I don't have a SIM card in it. I just use it for recording video. It was about $200. It's like 128 gigs. And the iPhone's great for shooting video. Um, I had a, a fancy Canon I borrowed from my dad and just had a lot of problems with it. If the room was dark, it looked like crud. I could never get rid of that rolling bar. iPhone just takes care of a lot of that. Um, a lot of Android phones, um, if you have a cheaper one, they won't be capable of certain features. Like even if you download like a, a pro app, like a $50 app for your phone, if the phone doesn't have the hardware to say manually adjust the focus, manually adjust the frame rate, the shutter speed, it just won't work. And uh, you can, you can uh, Google search and there's apps that will search your phone and see if it's capable of doing those features. Um, you'll have to look into that on your own. I did not have much luck with my own Android phone. Um, you know, recording CRTs is hard and that's part of the fun for me. Like it can be a pain, but I learn something every single time I shoot film or a video on my, of my CRT, I learn something new. Uh, like recently I was actually getting pretty good recordings of my large CRTs. Like I found... If I backed up enough, I could get rid of the moray. And I actually um, stopped recording this video I'm showing you guys because I learned some new stuff just while shooting this video. And, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, I can see why guys, you know, get really get really interested in the hobby of recording and editing. It, there, it goes deep and it's, you know, I'm a caveman when it comes to this stuff. So if you're a pro at this, I'm sure I said some things that are dumb. You know, go ahead and correct me. Talk shit like you know, I'm just starting out, but I know a lot of other guys are too. So I feel like walking people through step by step like this is going to help a lot of people because I watched some YouTube videos and, you know, they helped me a little bit, but I, I still had to learn a lot on my own. Oh, uh, yeah. Another one last thing to mention, um, you know, if you do all this trouble and you upload your video in a high quality like we did in 4K and you shot it in 4K, if your viewers watch it in 480p, it's not going to look that good. Like you need to watch it in like 720 or 1080 at the least, or they're going to see more. Right. Another thing is if they go to watch it on YouTube and they, they like have it in windowed mode. So it's shrunk down. You're going to see a lot of artifacts. You really need to watch these in 4k or at least 1080p um, on full screen. Uh, and that's going to wrap it up guys. Uh, go out there and record some hard CRTs for me.